certainly you already know how to perform a binary search on a faulted single dimensional array, correct? So naturally your interviewer will be interested to know, okay, what if you have a two dimensional array that is faulted? How will you perform this binary search algorithm on that? So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we are going to discuss all the different methods that you can use to approach this problem and then we will derive an efficient solution out of them. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a m cross n integer matrix. It simply means that you have m rows and you have n columns, correct? Now, this array is sorted in a row-wise manner. So, a 2D array can be sorted in a lot of different ways. You can sort it row-wise, you can sort it column-wise, and you can also have a spiral kind of sorting, correct? So, when it asks that, okay, this matrix is sorted in a row-wise manner, what does it mean? It simply means that you will find your least element as the first element, and your maximum element will be the last element, correct? And also, there is one more condition. You already know that all the rows are sorted, correct? But the first element of every row, this element is greater than the last element of your previous row. So, this gives you a very big hint. It tells you that if you are at row 2, then surely all of these elements, they will be greater than all the elements in your previous row. Correct? So technically, if you are going from the least element to the greatest element, then you will have to traverse your array somewhat in this manner, right? And this is how you define this array. So once this array is defined, you are asked that, okay, can you find a target 3 or can you find the target 13? So for example, these two test cases, you can find 3 over here, right? So you simply return a true in your first test case. And you can see that you cannot find 13 anywhere over here, right? So for the second test case, you simply need to return false as your answer. Now, the interesting part about this problem is that you are expected to provide a solution that works in a time complexity of log of m into n, correct? So how do you go about doing it? Before diving into the solution, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better now, first feel free to try it out. Otherwise, let's go for it. So once again, I have a sample 2D array with me that has m rows and n columns, correct? And you are given a target value of 30. You can see that all of my elements are sorted in a row wise fashion, correct? So how can you approach this problem? As a developer, you will try to first come up with a brute force approach, right? So the most naive way is that, okay, I will iterate through each element of the array and find if I can find a 30. So I can see a 30 over here and okay, I will return a true right? Yes, this solution works, but it will have a worst case time complexity of order of m cross n because you may have to iterate through the entire array, right? And that will end up taking a lot of time. So this gets you thinking, okay, how can I improve upon my solution? If you think about it, you never take any advantage of the fact that all the rows in this matrix are sorted, correct? And whenever you see an array that is sorted, you can apply the binary search algorithm, correct? So one way to solve this problem could be that, okay, you iterate over each row instead. And for every row, you apply the binary search algorithm. So one way could be that, okay, I will iterate over my first row and then I will try to apply the binary search algorithm on this row, right? And if I find it well and good, otherwise no. So what just happened? If I'm applying the binary search algorithm on my first row, then the time complexity would be order of log n, right? Because you are finding it in just one row, correct? If you do not find it, what do you do? You go on to the second row and then once again, you will apply the binary search algorithm. That will be again log n. If you find it, good. Otherwise, you go on to the third row and once again, you will apply the binary search algorithm and this will keep on happening for every row. So what is your resultant time complexity? Your resultant time complexity would be the number of rows multiplied by log n. So this is your time complexity if you are going through each row and then applying the binary search algorithm. So you may feel that, okay, this is a good solution, 
and I also took advantage of the fact that all my array is sorted. But still, this is not the desired time complexity. You want a time complexity of log of m into n, correct? And certainly there should be something which we are missing out. And that should be the thought. You never take any advantage of the fact that if I am at row 2, then all these elements, these are smaller than 10, right? So you need to leverage this fact as well. And that will help us to build an efficient solution. Let us see how that looks. To make things interesting, let us take up a bigger example this time. So I have this giant 2D array in front of me and I have this target element 71, correct? So if you recall what we were doing in the last approach, we iterated through each of the rows and we were applying a binary search algorithm, right? Try to think that what did we miss out? We never take any advantage of the fact that the first element of each row, this will be larger than the last element of your previous row, correct? So what does this mean? It simply means that all these columns, they will be also sorted, right? So what happens if I try to find this target element 71 in my column first? So just try to apply the binary search technique on this first column. So what happens? For this particular test case, when I have the value 71, you will apply binary search on this array and you find a 71 right over here, correct? So you can see that, okay, I found it and that is true. But what happens when the target value now changes? Let us say instead of 71, you have to now find 66. What will you do? Will you start iterating through every column now? Sure, if you do it, you will eventually find the value 66 and you can say that, hey, I found it. But doing this will again change your time complexity to m multiplied by log of n because you are doing the same approach, right? Going over each column now and then applying the binary search technique. So this is literally the same as going over each row and applying the binary search technique. So this is where you need to make some adjustment. So try to find the element 66 in the first column. You will say that, okay, I did not find the value 66, but you will find a very important piece of information. So you know that 66 will surely be greater than 59 and it will surely be less than 71, correct? So while applying the binary search algorithm, try to find a potential row where you will be able to search for your target element. So with this particular condition, you can be sure that, okay, my target element can only lie in this row, correct? So as a first step, you have to find a potential row in which you can find your target element. To find this potential row, you take up a time complexity of order of log of m, right? Because you have m different rows and you're applying the binary search algorithm. So this makes your problem so much easier, right? Now that you have found the potential row, you can just apply the binary search algorithm only on this row itself. You don't have to apply it on any other rows. And once you're applying this binary search on this particular row, you will have an additional time complexity of order of log n, right? And this will give you a total time complexity of log of m multiplied by n. So you see how we took advantage of the fact that this array is sorted in a row wise manner and we were able to arrive at our desired time complexity. Now this problem becomes so much easier, right? Let us quickly do a dry run of the code now and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample array and a target value that are passed in as an input parameter to the function search matrix. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run, first of all, let me give you an overview of what we are doing over here. So as you may remember, what did we first do? First of all, we identified a potential row, correct? Okay, that this is the row where my solution could exist or where I can find my target element. But what happens if I'm searching for element, let's say 99, or if I'm searching for minus 11, these elements do not exist anywhere, right? So I will not find any potential row for it. So first of all, in my dry run, what do we do? I will try to find a row, correct? If I find a row, well and good. I now need to apply the binary search algorithm on this row itself. Otherwise, I know that, okay, this element will not exist and I can simply return a false, correct? So that is exactly what we do over here. Try to look at this dry run now. 
So first of all, I try to find my potential row, correct? And to identify this row, I will perform a binary search on this first column itself. So I try to look for the element 16 in this first column. I do not find a 16 over here, but I find a potential row. Since 16 is smaller than 23 and greater than 10, it simply means that this row 1, this is my potential row. And once I exit out of this function, I will get my potential row as 1. Now that I know that, okay, I have to find my element only in this row, I will use this index and once again call the binary search algorithm over the row. This time I will have one more binary search implementation and I just try to find out this element 16 in this row. If I find it, yes, I will return a true, otherwise I will return a false. So you can see, we just applied binary search algorithm two times and we were able to arrive at our answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of log of m cross n and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because we do not take any extra space to arrive at our solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems where your input dataset is sorted, then you have to take advantage of the fact and try to come up with a solution that is working in an order of log n time complexity. And the reverse is also true. Whenever you are expected that, okay, provide me a solution that works in an order of log n time complexity, that certainly means that you have to approach this problem in a binary search fashion, or rather a divide and conquer approach. Because at every step, you will have to divide the problem into two segments such that your solution is simplified. Think about it, even binary search trees, you take advantage of the fact that one portion of the tree is smaller than the node and one portion is larger. So effectively, you are breaking your problem into two parts at every interval, correct? So just keep this in mind and take this as a hint when coming up with solutions. So while going throughout this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other problems which use the binary search or the divide and conquer technique underneath its shadows? So tell me all about it in the comment section below and it would be helpful for all of us. I will be more than happy to discuss all of it. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.